everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums, and I'm going to show you the project I made using Charlotte's Friends paper from Country Craft Creation. I used the 12 by 12 paper and made a book nook. So a book nook generally is going to be more rectangular. This is more of a trapezoid shape. I, I just needed the room. I haven't made book nooks before. And this is just how it came out. So um, I'll show you the top so you can see that is the shape of it. Here's the back. You still could use this on a bookshelf. You would put books over here and then uh, this would be showing from the side. The video is going to be my process on how I made it. I'm going to do a voiceover on my process. There's a couple of components to it. It's how I put it together how I made the tree, how I did the bricks, and then the final was how I uh, added the paper and put in the different elements. So let me show you first how I built it and we'll go from there. Let's get started. So I used an actual book uh, for the sides of it. And I knew I wanted it to be at an angle, so I took some scrap chipboard and drew uh, pretty much the angle that I wanted, and then I cut that out on my paper trimmer. Uh, this was really thick chipboard, so it took several passes to cut it out. So you notice my, uh, trip, my trimmer keeps moving. Um, you actually need two of this size, one for the top, one for the bottom. I also cut some pieces of scrap cardstock. Uh, they're about two inches by whatever the width of the book was, and I scored it in half, or I just folded it. And I added some glue, and just made, um, just made a base for everything to sit on. I had some excess of that blue cardstock, so I just used my knife to cut it off. Now, of course, I needed to. Um, make something on the top, so I do that next. I did add some of the paper. I covered that uh, piece of chipboard in just about the same way you would cover a book, but of course it's got four weird sizes, but I wasn't going to worry too much about it. Um, and again, I just used some scrap paper that I had. After I covered it, I grabbed some more scrap cardstock, fold it in half, and use that so I could adhere it to the top of the book. This time I cut it down. And then after this, there is another step where I added some more of the paper to cover it. You'll see that in a second. Adding some glue. So half of the uh, piece of cardstock goes onto my trapezoid shape. And then the other half is going to go on the book. See that piece on the left-hand side? That is going to go on the top. You can see here how I adhered the paper. It's just a 1 12 by 12 piece, and I glued it on the sides. I don't know if I actually show you doing that, but I mean, obviously it's pretty simple. So I'm adding glue to here. I put it in. You should not glue the, uh, the paper inside until you get the top and the bottom on. And then I take the one piece for the top and just cover it. Makes it nice and neat. And you don't see any of the mess inside. And it's pretty strong too. I, I was surprised. So you could just leave it that way, but of course I'm going to add other elements to it. Oh yeah, so here I'm showing you putting it in the book. So basically I'm just going to glue it to the sides. Um, leave the top, I had some extra glue in my finger. Leave the top open. I didn't, I should have. Um, just because it makes it easier as we go. And it's just the 12 by 12 paper. It fit perfectly, but obviously dry fit it before you assume it's going to fit. I let about a sixteenth of an inch of the book show on the side and it makes 
perfect backdrop for some dimension. Oh, I guess I cut some down. Oh, the book I think was nine inches tall, so I had to cut three inches off of the bottom. I cut some off of the top and some of the bottom. I knew I was going to cover that one bunny on the bottom, so I didn't worry about it. So it's flat on the top. It doesn't go over the top. And obviously you can see that the paper doesn't go all the way to the back of the book. To make the tree, I cut a couple of pieces of chipboard, just long triangular shapes. I took some wire I had. It's real thin wire. A little thick of wire would have probably helped. But I have about five or six strands of the wire. Um, I bend it over and then add some hot glue to the back of it so it'll stay. I think the hardest part about this was waiting for that hot glue to dry. Um, and then I did add a couple of more pieces of chipboard as the limbs. As I said, there's five or six strands. There was one strand that was really long, so I bent it in half and just sort of twisted it a little bit. Yeah, you can, you can see a little bit. I'm just messing around with it. Hey, listen, I've never made a tree with wire and chipboard and hot glue so i'm just practicing here i decided to add some hot glue to make sort of lines and to help adhere the uh, wire that way it would add a little bit of dimension all right here's the other pieces of chipboard i'm going to glue it on and wire it around but eventually i'm going to cover it with some uh, paper towel and mod podge so yeah, I'm just playing with the wires a little bit. I wanted the wires to uh, grasp the greenery that I'm going to put on there. That's why I had them. Now you can see the tree is starting to look a little more like a tree and not like just a bunch of wires. Here I'm going to hot glue. The chipboard is overlapping the base chipboard by just a little bit. But you can't tell because of the glue. All right, I wanted something else on here. So I grabbed some paper towels and I just cut it up in uh, smaller pieces. And some ideas to sort of wrap it around this tree and then the Mod Podge would help hold it down. Well, you know what? It's not as easy. As I thought. So I'm going to adhere the Mod Podge. I made quite a mess in the craft room, let me tell you. It was a fun mess, but it was quite a mess. So then I put down the paper towel. I thought the paper towel was genius. I was going to use tissue paper, but the paper towel already had some texture to it. So I thought that's perfect. It wasn't as easy because my fingers were sticky and it stuck all over the place but eventually I did wrap the paper towel around it and cover it enough to give it some texture. You know you probably don't even need to add the tree to the background but like I said I wanted to have a little more dimension. You could just use the fabulous paper from the paper collection but uh, I, I was having fun doing it. I had some ideas of using some polymer clay and making little planters and all that but um, for simplicity's sake, I just stuck to the tree. And then you'll see how I add the dimension in a little bit. All right. So after I get the tree in the shape that I like, I paint it, just acrylic paint. I figured I'll paint it one base color and then I'll add extra color to make it look a little more dimensional. So I'm mixing some white with the brown or tan, actually. Um, just to help give it a little more dimension. Then I take this moss and hot glue it at the top. It does not have to look like a perfect tree. Again, it's going to go in the background, but I think it looks like a nice tree. I had all these color of mosses. I just used the dark moss and then I adhered it right to the back of the paper. Okay, this shows my inexperience. When I first started making my book nook, I thought it was going to be less wide at the front so I measured six inches and 
cut this out of that real um, thick card stock and I added some clay. Now you'll see up at the top right corner is the package of clay. It is just Dollar Tree air dry clay. I glued it down because I didn't want it to come off, but you'll see in just a second, I had to change the whole structure of this. Um, to make the little stones, I just broke off a, a little small circle and rolled it in my finger and added glue and smushed it down. I let it become a regular. They didn't all have to be the same. I wanted sort of rounded stones to replicate what was in the picture. The part I'm using with my craft knife, knife, I thought the top of it, the top of the arch, should have looked like bricks or smaller stones. But as you see, uh, it all changes. Uh, once I put the arch up over my book nook, I realized, oh no, that's not going to work. So I had to make it bigger. So here it is a little bigger. You can see I just added some cardstock at the back just to uh, correct it. Now, if you do it right the first time, you don't need to do that. So you can see all the different bricks. You see the funky ones at the middle. Those are the ones I added. I am adding paint and the best way to do this is paint it all over in one color. I think I painted it with a dark brown thinking I wanted that to go in the crevices. Again, I'm trying to replicate the colors in that picture. I mix some of the browns together again just to make sure it's all coated. I do try to make sure I cover the, the area in between the, the little stones. Those ones at the bottom aren't completely dry, but it ends up not really making a difference. I did notice there were some cracks in the stones when it dried, but I just thought that sort of added to the whole look of it. Once I painted it over, then I mixed a couple of different colors and, you know, painted every third one, one with sort of a gray tone and every sixth one, one with a, a whiter color just so they would look different. Once I did that, I mixed some water with some of the brown paint and went over it again, but just in a small section at a time. And then I rubbed it with a paper towel. So I just, again, wanted it to get in a crevice and that sort of filled in the cracks and the crevices. And that gave it some shadow and some dimension. So I took a second piece of this paper and cut out some of the features in it. I didn't use the mother tying the tie, but I did use a lot of these plants. So I put some chipboard on the back of them. I took a craft knife and made a couple of slits in it and then folded it up. That's how I got everything to stand up. I added some glue to it to make sure it would stand. And that's what I did to that little bunny so he would stand just as well. So I'm just placing everything um, just where I think it's going to look good. Now, obviously, you can see I have not put the uh, stone in the front yet, so I know some of that's going to get covered over by the stone. I love the flowers. I thought they were really pretty and added some dimension, but I had hoped, again, to use some polymer clay and to make some small uh, little buckets of greenery, but that takes a lot of time. I've never done it, so there's that learning curve too. I'm adding some more of the moss. I have the darker in the back, and then I start doing that medium shade in the front. I don't want the whole uh, surface to be covered with the moss because I will add some other things to it, but I did think it uh, help to blend everything in and also help to hold everything in tight as far as with the glue. All right, I had three little mushrooms that I purchased as miniatures. I put them in the back just to help draw the eye to the back part of it. A word of advice, if you're going to do this, plan it out ahead. It would have been easier to put those little mushrooms in before he added the other features. It wasn't a big deal, but still, plan ahead. All right, so here I am just sizing the stone front, and I am adding my hot, getting my hot glue, adding the glue to the side. 
It didn't fit perfectly, but I use moss to fill it in in a little bit. So I first put glue on the side. I should have done the side, the top, I mean the two sides and then the top at the same time. Didn't think ahead, but I figure it out. Um, some of the glue is coming off, so I'm using my craft knife to sort of blend it in. I'm holding it, squeezing it just so everything will uh, adhere real well. And you may notice I did put some moss down at the bottom. I put a little more in as I go. I just sort of put it, ripped it off a little bit and crammed it in between the stones. And uh, obviously, if you look at the picture, you'll see I have some blue flowers that I had had in my stash. And I wanted it to look like the flowers were vining up the stone. So just messing around with the hot glue, making sure everything is adhered real well. Okay, I'm going to show you some still photos. See here where the two stairs are on the bottom? I cut them out of a different piece of, a different part of the paper because I didn't want the bunny that I had cut out, I didn't want him to be shown in two spots. Take a look at the paper and you'll see what I mean. I added a um, some miniatures I got from a craft and hobby shop just to help add some dimension to everything. And these are just some close-up pictures so you could see how it's made. And there you go. It wasn't the most difficult project. It took a little bit of doing to get the stones, but I hope it gave you some inspiration. This paper was fabulous to work with. Again, it's the Charlotte's Friends from Country Craft Creations. The link will be in the description box so you can see all of it. Thanks so much for watching and have a fabulous day.